Coming up, students participated in Campus Activities Board last event of the semester, plus Texas A&M Kingsville hosts a big ceremony celebrating our veterans. This episode of the Javelina Broadcast Network starts right now. Hello, Havelinas. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Havelina Broadcast Network. I'm your host, Dina D'Souza. And I'm Omar Moreno. Let's get started with our first story of the episode. Student Activity Board is hosting their final event of the semester. And what way to go out than with the Glowcade? Our co-editor-in-chief, Chris Olivares, has all the details about it. Hey, Javelinas. This is Chris Olivares here at the Glowcade event hosted by CAB. With this being the final event of the semester, students were encouraged to come out and have some fun. We've had a Glowcade as an event in the past, and a lot of students really loved it, so we decided to bring it back to campus this year. So some of the games we have available for students are um, Glow in the Dark Putt-Putt, we have Glow in the Dark Jenga, and then we also have Ping Pong as well. We think that Glowcade is more interactive within the students. Also, like, there's more collaboration, like I said, with interaction. So um, as a student is waiting to play ping pong, another one is playing golf. Then it's like, hey, I want to play golf. So they're just, like, switching around. I expect a great turnout, especially since it involves music. And I don't know any person that does not like music. So hopefully, you know, a lot of students come here, enjoy with their friends before the stressful events come in. Glowcade seemed to be a big help for students as they shift their focus towards the finals. This has been Chris Olivares, back to the desk with Omar and Zena. The Language and Literature Department hosted a Dia de los Muertos altar decorating contest to give students and the community an opportunity to remember important Hispanic figures and to celebrate their life and culture with the wider community of Kingsville. Our reporter, Sierra Cortez, was on the scene. Hey Javelinas, I'm CJ and I'm here at Fort Hall where they're holding Dia de los Muertos Ofrenda Contest where students come together and share memories about loved ones with the Tamuk community. Let's go take a closer look. I'm really excited. I was so, I'm so happy that I won. I feel like I'm representing my grandpa. I feel like the most topics that I talk about is that everything in the ofrenda has a significance to it. Even the colors down to the tablecloth has a meaning to it. And it has a, we have to do a lot of research for that sometimes. But I think that's the main topic, that everything in the ofrenda has a significant importance to it. So this is uh, a Dia de los Muertos celebration. Um, the department has organized uh, this event for students to create altars, altares, um, to honor the dead, honor the people that have passed, their loved ones, people they've known, they admire. The students have done works on family, on um, figures at the university, you know, important prominent figures like N N Dr. Nierman um, and many other professors that, that um, Irma Rangel and other uh, prominent people that have helped the university. There's an altar on Juan Gabriel, there's an altar on Pele. So students just evoke the, the soul and the spirits of the people they love and they admire and they want to communicate with. So this is just a space that's open in the hallways of, of Fort Hall for them to share with the community um, their, their memory of the loved ones. Um, absolutely, I think w this event we've, we've had for over 10 years now, we've been hosting this. Uh, the, this particular uh, event, which goes uh, together with the contest, has been organized by Sigma Delta Pi, the Gamma Gamma Lambda Sat chapter, which is the, Hispanic, the, the chapter here at the University of the Hispanic Honor Society. Um, and uh, they, they, like I said, they've hosted this event for over 10 years. And I, I've actually, it's, it's, it's been wonderful because now you see a lot of other buildings around campus also um, uh, embracing the creation of altares in their own hallway. So it's, 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 it's part of our community, I think, here in South Texas. And I think students really, really enjoy um, being able to share and, and see the beautiful altars that this, the, their, their classmates have created, their colleagues have created. This has been CJ, back to the desk with Zena and Omar. The Connor Museum held an event for the book Latino Warrior, an evening of poetry, prose, and art, which gave the students of Texas A&M University Kingsville the chance to meet Colonel Lisa Carrington Furman. Campus editor Mariana Soria was there with more. Hey, Javelinas, we're here at the John E. Connor Museum, where we're taking a closer look at Latino Warrior's book release and art exhibit. Let's go check it out. In the last three years, I've probably been the most authentic I've ever been about capturing my experiences, my lived experiences. And, and I was on a healing journey. Healing journey from what? From, from combat experiences, from military sexual trauma, from sexual assault, sexual harassment, 
So it started out kind of in a dark place, writing about trauma. Uh, and then it, I was able to write kind of my entire autobiography in verse through poetry. And I wrote about the joys in my life. Uh, I wanted to honor my heritage mm -hmm. as a Latina from mm -hmm. El Valle. Mm -hmm. um, and I also wanted to um, honor and, and pay respect to my military experiences. So this book, The Juxtaposition Between Latina and Warrior, I think are real important. Um, and no subject is uh, off limits for this book. Um, so I think that's important to say too, because I, I'm really authentic, really real. I mean, the book is, has Spanish, has English, and Spanglish in it. <laughs> you know, so I think this is me, this is who I am, right? And sometimes it has you know, a word or two that might be considered vulgar or are vulgar, uh, but that, it's hard to describe combat without some of these words. So I, I do that as well. Right, so for me, it's, it's an autobiography in a hybrid format, and then I was able to collaborate with a fellow combat veteran, another woman who was in the Army, um, and she's a brilliant artist, and she brought every poem I wrote to life through art. A lot of people, you know, had feedback, and it's like, it's too much, it's too busy, it's overwhelming. But then, then the same people come back and go, you know what, it's now my favorite piece, because they have to come back to it, and they keep finding things in it that they didn't see before. And that's, that's the beauty of collage, right? Um, you have to take time, you have to sit in it. And it's, and it's so big that um, a lot of people are almost intimidated by it. Well, they're intimidated by this woman as well, right? Um, so that's the beauty of the piece. And it's the beauty of, you know, you know being a Latina warrior as well. This is Mariana Soria. Now back to the desk with Omar and Zina. And now for everyone's favorite segment, Hoggy Highlights. In a recent State of the University address, Dr. Robert Vela talked about the university's plan to build a health hub and shared the blueprints for the new construction. This is expected to increase enrollment numbers. Students gather at the community fan favorite pizza parlor for Y2K trivia about the 2000s. This event was hosted by Student Engagement and Campus Life, giving students a chance to participate in a fun activity as final season looms over the horizon. Stick around for the biggest story on this episode after a word from our sponsors. Oh, hey, we were just about to record the CJM podcast with your host, DJ Daniels and Chris Olivares and Matthew Roberts. Make sure to tune in on Spotify. New episodes out every Friday. And tune in on KTAI 91.1 The One on Saturdays. Welcome back, Cavalinas. I'm your host, Ina D'Souza. And I'm Omar Bonanno. Let's jump into the biggest story of this episode. Texas A&M University Kingsville held a Veterans Day ceremony in the IMSA ballroom, honoring the lives of soldiers that have fought for our nation. Co-editor-in-chief Brianna Beltran was at the scene. Hello, everyone. My name is Brianna Beltran, and I'm outside of the 2023 Veterans Day Ceremony, hosted by Texas A&M University Kingsville's Veteran and Military Resource Center. Let's take a glimpse into what they had to offer. What was your main role in today's event? I think the main goal is for the entire institution to know, not just the students, but the faculty and staff and larger community members, that we really support veterans and military families and that we believe they're a part of our bigger family here on campus. What is the most difficult obstacle that you faced while you were serving? When I was serving, probably getting to learn how other people interacted with others and then learning how to come together as a whole. At first it was kind of hard, you didn't know how everyone was from different places like um, New York or whatever. And then you come together and you all become one as like a, pretty much a family. So did you access any of the resources that we have here on campus? Um, I did get some like counseling, academic like counseling from Eloy Games. Uh, he talked to me about using my GI Bill, using Chapter 31, which is the Volk Rehab, and saving my... GI Bill that I have now, the post 9-11 for grad school, which I am going to be attending after I graduate. And why is it so important to have veterans and active duty resources and events on campus? Um, mostly just to show our students that, you know, there's these people out here that, you know, kind of are, are unspoken heroes where, you know, they deserve their respect. They deserve, um, you know, just to be known 
for what they did and how they served um, our country. And it's really important for our, you know the younger students to really understand you know the sacrifices that these people make for us. Um, you know just on a daily basis, whether they you know when they served and even now, where like a big point that they made uh, in a couple of the speeches today were you know not only did they serve but they continue to serve. So it was definitely. Um, it is definitely a good kind of lesson, something I'm still learning as well, um, being a student here is um, understanding all the sacrifices that our veterans make for us on a daily basis. Thank you for tuning in to the Javelina Media Experience. This has been Brianna Beltran at the 2023 Veterans Day Ceremony. And now for all of our sports fans, it's time for our sideline report with Jacob Daniels. Thanks, Omar. Welcome to the Sideline Reports. Let's get into some sports highlights. Congratulations to the Javelina football team on their recent win against Western Oregon, beating them 34-27. The Javelinas brought the fall season to an end, taking on Midwestern State University this past weekend. Also to highlight an outstanding player of the week, senior defensive back Keon Clary was honored the LSC Defensive Player of the Week bringing in the season to an end. Congratulations, Keon. For more updates on Javelina football and spring ball as this semester comes to a close, be sure to check out Javelina Athletics for more. Now, on to basketball. The women's team are currently on the road preparing for their preseason game against UTEP in El Paso, Texas. Both the men and women will be packing the house for their first conference game and here at the Spec on November 30th. You won't want to miss this home opener. Both the men and women are expected to finish sixth in the Lone Star Conference this season, so be sure to come out and support them. Lastly, be on the lookout for track highlights and updates as their season approaches. Well, that's all for sports segments on this episode of the Javelina Broadcast Network. Now, back to the desk with Zena and Omar. Thanks, Jacob. Be sure to pick up the latest issue of the South Texan and subscribe to the Javelina Media Experience for all latest updates around campus. I'm Omar Moreno. And I'm Zena D'Souza. Thank you for watching this episode of the Javelina Broadcast Network.